environment. And when I look at the uh, the new five-year organisational strategy that the ECC is putting together and will be publishing next year, there's four priorities in there, one of which is all about taking very serious action on climate change. So the, the amount that has changed and the political will that is now behind this agenda is, has been a very fundamental shift. And I think that's referenced in the very public statements that the leader has made recently in months ago to uh, for ECC to take a leading role in trying to take climate action very seriously in Essex. Um, one of the key building planks of that has been the creation of the Essex Climate Action Commission, which is independently chaired by Lord Randall, um, who was the climate advisor to the Theresa May government. And that committee is doing work as we speak to look at what steps we can take to reduce emissions across Essex and get us to net zero by 2050 at the latest, if not sooner. And the interim report from the Commission will be coming out, it's just about to be published any day now, so I do recommend that uh, you look out for that if you're interested to see uh, what advice and recommendations the Committee is making to the politicians of the Essex County Council. And there will be a final report from that Committee in the spring of next year. And um, I think that one of the um, uh, one of the, the areas that the committee is looking at is what steps we can take around energy and the energy system in Essex and it's also very looking very closely at emissions from transport and we'll be hearing from Tomlinson in just a minute with regards to charging station. What, one of the things I'm really passionate about though with the work that ECC is starting to do is around the role that residents and communities can take in driving climate action and Ollie will say a little bit more about this later in the presentation, but I was very mindful that there's a very active community energy scene in England, um, but there appeared to be a bit of a gap in Essex. So I kicked off some work, we kicked off some work with Community Energy South earlier on this year to start to understand um, who was interested in getting involved in community energy, the community energy work in the county and we ran some work earlier on in the year which has identified um, a, a very good number of people and organisations who are keen to get very heavily involved in uh, climate action work and um, following on from that we're now uh, working with Community Energy South to support some of those groups to come forward and start to take some steps on climate action and, and um, start to help some of those groups get formulated, get off the ground start to take some steps in the local community. Um, just by way of a few examples of the kinds of things that we have been doing recently, Esme, if you could flip on to the next slide. Thank you. Um, so we have already been very successful in securing European funding um, to support low carbon work across Essex and across the southeast. We've been working, doing a lot of work with um, small and medium sized enterprises to help them steps to reduce their carbon emissions from their work, from their, from their businesses. Um, we've also run a very successful collective solar panel purchasing scheme to help residents install solar panels on the roofs of their buildings. And we will be launching another scheme uh, on the 1st of December uh, to help residents uh, look to switch their energy tariffs uh, across to renewable energy tariffs and at the same time to do money on their domestic energy bills. So there are, there are a number of projects that we've already got underway to help um, communities and residents take steps on climate action. We've also um, more recently started to take some early steps in, in helping install on-street charge points across the county with just a very small number of installations at our park and ride sites. Um, more recently, um, some on-street resident uh, parking bays. But we'll also be uh, very soon undertaking a scheme to install the short of 100 charge points across the county to start to roll out more on-street charge points for residents who don't have off-street parking, which is going to be another important plank in helping create the electric vehicle infrastructure that we know we're going to need, and we're going to need very quickly, particularly if the government does bring forward, as we hope it will, to the pace at which um, sales of a, a petrol and diesel cars will be banned. Um, so that's just a very brief um, mention of a couple of the things that we're starting to do at Essex County Council. I was really pleased last week to be at a similar event down in Banbury 
uh, talking to the community there off the back of some solar panel installations that we'd funded at the outdoor center in the primary school and it was really encouraging to listen to residents and hear their thoughts on community energy groups and there's certainly i was very struck by the amount of passion that there was among residents to get involved in these schemes so i i just want to close by saying that um at county we're very uh we're very enthusiastic about helping residents get involved in this agenda and the work that we're doing with Ollie and colleagues at Community Energy South with the kinds of schemes that we, we'll hear a bit more about from Tollington in just a second. Um, I am really passionate about getting Essex on the map and taking strides and taking strides very quickly to help us take serious action around, around climate, uh, the climate action agenda. So I look forward to hearing people's uh, views and I look forward to hearing the discussion this evening um and hopefully in the very near future being able to support a community energy group being formed in great Notley. great thanks very much tom um just before i introduce toddington um from from gridserve i should have reminded you all that this session is being recorded and um so we will make we will make the link available and Suzanne Walker has asked us about that. And um, the slides, we'll, we'll find a way of sharing the slides with you as well. And we'll probably follow up with an email with everybody at the end. I'll just clarify that with Esme. Um, so do use the chat box as you go along. So um, let's find out about um, the grid serve and the charging station and hear from Toddington Harper, the chief executive of grid serve. Fantastic. Hi, everybody. I um, hope you can hear me okay. Um, yeah, this, this picture, I imagine, looks quite familiar uh, because, you know, the, the picture on the front of the slide that you started with was, if you like, an animated version of this. Um, but actually, as of last week, this is exactly what it looks like. I'm sure, um, you know, many of you have seen, probably all of you have seen the other side of the building, but this is, this is what it looks, uh, it looks like from the other side. Um, you know, really excited to be talking to you today um, about what we're doing, delivering, you know, I mean, it is, uh, it is Essex's first electric forecourt, it's also the UK's, and it's also the world's first electric forecourt. Um, so it, it is a really pretty epic project, um, and it's got really, you know, really exciting potential um, because, you know, not only are we delivering some new infrastructure that hasn't ever been done before, certainly not to this scale and th this level, um, but really it's also setting a path for us to be able to um, help really deliver net zero transport you know, from this year uh, onwards. Uh, and I think that's really important because it's highly likely that sometime tomorrow um, our Prime Minister is going to announce that he is he's bringing forward the date for banning petrol, diesel and, uh, and hybrid cars, um, uh, petrol and diesel cars to 2030 uh, and hybrid cars to 2035. Um, and uh, and so really that's that's around nine years from now so if you think that we've only got around nine years before you can't buy a new petrol or diesel car uh, then you know we, we really can't get infrastructure like this uh, over the line quick enough so um, I'm just gonna take you through some uh, Esme if you can kind of go in the next slide it's, it's quite a lot of pictures on, on, on what I've got to talk about um, uh, oh, that slide's come up slightly funny, but okay, I'll keep going. So a little bit about us. Um, so GridServe is a four-year-old uh, business. Uh, I stress that it's four years old because we've got an awful lot, lot to do to address the challenges in front of us of mitigating climate change. Um, and, you know, and I think GridServe is a pretty good example of what, what one can do in a pretty short, short amount of time if we really give it a good go. Um, I haven't started from scratch, of course. Just back one if you could. Um, uh, as I haven't started from scratch, um, I've been working in this space for uh, forever. I've built um, around five businesses over the last 20 years, all sustainable energy companies. And I am the second generation solar person in the context that my dad was building solar and battery projects 45 years ago. Um, and quite randomly, I'm named after a service station, Toddington Services, believe it or not. Uh, as is my brother Heston. So it's, there's some weird kind of fake thing going on uh, with it all as well. Um, what we are doing as a company, our, um, our mission, our purpose is to deliver sustainable energy. Um, really at such a scale, we can help move the needle on climate change. You know, we're under no illusions we can do that ourselves. It's a collective effort. And that's why groups like this are so important. 
because it's up to all of us collectively to do what we can. Um, you know, as part of that messaging, we use the word deliver a lot, hashtag deliver, um, because really we don't need any more evidence that climate change is, is upon us, that things are, are, are getting bad and are gonna get much worse. All the solutions to address these problems fortunately all exist. Uh, we just need to get on with it. We need to deliver, you know, which we kind of you know, bring together in a very simple phrase of hashtag deliver. Um, and so we're gonna be talking about both you know, this project uh, and more widely, um, you know, raising some thoughts on what we can do together to accelerate progress. So uh, next slide, please. Doesn't that on my end? Oh, hello. Ollie. Um, no. Okay, so um, this is a really important slide. You know, people talk a lot about climate change. People talk a lot about temperature rises and, and, and so on. This is probably the best example that, um, that we know of. And I look at this more, more or less every day. And this summarizes the results from the world's top leading scientists from the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. Um, when you put carbon emissions in the atmosphere, they, they act a bit like a, a, a duvet. You know, heat is able to come in from the sun and it's, it's not so easy to get out and, and the earth gets warmer. Um, scientists don't disagree on that. Uh, and in fact, the world's leading scientists um, all unanimously agree that, uh, you know, under the IPCC, um, the more carbon we produce into the atmosphere, the, the, the warmer it's going to get. Temperatures have already increased by about one degrees of warming, uh, and that's already had some pretty catastrophic effects around the world. The kind of world's leading scientists believe that if we get to uh, one and a half degrees, um, it's going to really start accelerating and, and two degrees things go really out of control and that's why in the Paris agreement on climate change the kind of overall target is we cannot exceed two degrees um, and really we'd like to stay beyond one degrees of warming one and a half degrees of warming sorry which um, which you know what does that actually mean at two degrees you know as an example one of the world's you know, leading scientists explained to me that 99 percent of all the coral reefs in the world cannot survive to put it in perspective so it's pretty dire stuff um but what does it really mean this graph illustrates that we've got around um approximately 300 billion just under now 300 billion tons of carbon emissions that we can still produce um before there's enough kind of cushion of if you like a uh, insulating blanket of gas around the world that the temperatures will rise beyond one and a half degrees of warming and unfortunately, the rate that that's happening at, that's going to happen around seven years from now. So it's not that the temperatures are going to go beyond one and a half degrees in seven years, but um, it means there'll be enough insulating kind of cushion of, air, of, of, of gases that, that temperatures will inevitably rise beyond one and a half degrees if we let that amount of carbon emissions be released. So it's very, very important that we look at this thinking not just that we've got seven years to stop this, but we must never let that happen. Um, if we move to the next slide. Um, if we do let it happen, then, um, then uh, you know, things are going to go, uh, you know, incredibly, um, you know, going to be incredibly difficult for generations to come. And probably, you know, don't take my word for it. You know, what do I know? I'm a sustainable energy person. Uh, if anyone really needs any evidence of how much the planet is changing, you know, just, just watch this video from uh, David Attenborough, A Life on Our Planet. Um, you know, he's been studying the planet, making videos over the last, whatever it is, 60 odd years, amazingly. Um, it's in, you know, just under two hours of your life. Uh, and really he just explains, you know, how life has changed so dramatically. Most of what's happened so far has been because of change of habitat, but the really kind of big message that he provides is that it's gonna get much, much worse unless we do something about it. And actually we've managed to wipe out as kind of humans in the last um, 50 years, around 60% of the world's wildlife. So it's pretty desperate stuff, you know, having said all of that, you know, fortunately, we do have seven years. Fortunately, we do have the solutions. Fortunately, we do have the ability to do something about it. And we have time on our side if we just, you know, actually coll collectively deliver what needs to be done, you know, today, tomorrow, uh, and in the very short term. So if you go to the next slide, I'm just going to talk about some of the things that we are doing to really kind of help move the needle. When we talk about move the needle, it means kind of moving the trajectory that we're currently on uh, into a different outcome. So this is a picture that was... Um, that, that, that came into the media. There's been lots of pictures, um, uh, and the you know, quite interesting thing that we, 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 far, we, we find is interesting about what we're doing is that a lot of the pictures we don't produce, they're, they're found by other people. We've had helicopters spying on us, we've had drones, we've had all sorts of stuff, which I, I guess proves we must be doing something interesting. So I'm gonna show you some, some things people haven't seen yet from a helicopter, if you go to the next slide. 
Um, just on a high level, really, what, what is it all about? Um, so the, um, you know, the, the central purpose is that to enable anybody to transition to an electric vehicle, any type of electric car, and there's now around 200 models of electric vehicles uh, in, in Europe, um, and you know, many, many more on the way, um, to enable anybody to transition to an electric car, whether you have a charger at home or not, um, and to do so without having any you know, anxiety around where do you charge and so on. And actually also, you know, in a way that you, people can do it and, and that, that, that it means it's not, not more expensive. In fact, that it's less expensive than petrol or diesel. That's ultimately what we're trying to achieve with projects like this. And I'm gonna explain how we do it. Um, also that when you get to a destination and your vehicle is charging, that you have uh, facilities, you know, washrooms, high-end Wi-Fi, because you're gonna be there for a little while, kids area, well-being area, um, we also have meeting pods, you know, again, it's something which is really, really useful. You can do with your time and something we're also, um, we would welcome a community energy group to, to, to use. And we would for sure happy to, happy to sponsor that. Um, also where you can get, you know, relevant, um, you know, suitable convenience retailers, you would get in a, in a modern petrol fork or coffee food and so on. Um, but also very important to learn about electric vehicles uh, and find the right solutions that are, uh, that are most relevant for people's needs. Um, so that people can just you know, find the right electric vehicle uh, and just you know make make that transition you know straight away uh, in a really positive way. So okay, that's what we're trying to achieve to kind of help accelerate progress in this area. Um, if you just go to the next slide, this is what it looks like outside. Um, these are real pictures uh, as of um, as of last week. Uh, so there are 24 very high power chargers on the site. Um, the fastest chargers have the ability to put um, 200 miles of, of charge into an electric car in around 10 minutes. Now, most cars won't let that happen yet, um, but certainly the trend in electric cars is that, is that the batteries are, are, uh, are, are able to charge faster and faster. Um, and what we've done is we've future-proofed it so that people can charge um, you know, any type of vehicle as quick as that vehicle will, will allow it to charge. Uh, and there are 24 charges we've put in. And in addition to that, there's a further six uh, Tesla charges too. So really, you know, nobody you know, who needs to charge their vehicle who's in the vicinity of this project. And fortunately for Great Notley, you, know, you, are, you, know, you, you have the opportunity to benefit most from the project because you're, you're the closest to it. Um, you really should be able to have total confidence you can turn up, charge your vehicle in a great environment uh, with no disadvantages. So next slide, please. So this is what it looks like currently downstairs. Uh, so we have a full Costa coffee. Um, we call it like a, a best of British um, selection of convenience retail partners. So we have WH Smiths, who's um, you know, been around since 1792. We've got Costa coffee. Okay, it's recently been acquired by Coca-Cola, but it's a preeminent, uh, you know, it's, it's probably the, the main um, UK uh, coffee brand. So we're coming out of the UK. Um, we have um, we have booths, so they've uh, a supermarket. You know, more common in the north of the UK, but they've been around since uh, since uh, 1847. And we also have the post office. So a really useful selection of of, um, of entities to, to have in this space. Um, if you can go next, and this is where it gets a bit different. So we also have um, have what we call the G Lounge. Um, where people can go and wait till wait and sit down, relax um, while their vehicles are charging. Also, where you can sit to have a cup, cup of coffee, something to eat, to eat, to eat and so on. Um, there are also the pods, which um, actually you can't you haven't really got a clear picture in this photo in the photo here. But there are several meeting pods where people can sit down and have meetings, and that's where I, I suggested that um, you know if people are keen to for, form uh, community energy groups in in Great Notley then we would be very keen, as I said, to, to sponsor a location for people to come and have those meetings in a really fantastic environment. Um, and you know, and that, is a, that, is a, that is a genuine offer. Um, the other thing about this location is it's designed to also provide um, a, a real platform, as I mentioned, for people to learn about electric vehicles. So we'll be showcasing all the different types of electric vehicles um, so people can turn up. Um, you know, it's all free to turn up and visit. No one has to pay and, and, and so on just to kind of look around. Um, people will be able to learn all, all about lots of different types of electric vehicles and work out which ones are most suitable for them. Next, please. I'm going at 100 miles an hour because I've just got quite a lot to say in a fairly short amount of time, but I will keep going through. So the other thing which 
isn't directly in the site. I mean, people will notice there is quite a lot of solar power at the electric forecourt. Um, there's enough solar energy on the canopy and on the roof to produce enough energy to drive around 800,000 miles a year um, in an electric vehicle or in electric vehicles. But when you, when you take it that the average car in the UK drives around 8,000 miles a year, that's only enough energy for, um, for 100 people. So what we've done in addition to that is we've gone and, uh, and acquired this solar farm. Normally we build solar farms as well, but we've acquired this one uh, and we've twinned it with the uh, electric forecourt. Um, and what that means is that all of the energy that's used at the electric forecourt is, uh, is, uh, is gonna be either used from the solar panels produced uh, on site, uh, and in addition to that, uh, any excess energy we need to draw from the grid, we, we net it off um, against energy that we will import from the grid from that will put into the grid on this solar farm uh, 44 miles up the road. And as a result of that, you can be absolutely sure that all of the energy used at this site is net zero. So the government has this ambition of by 2050, we net, need to get to net zero. But from the moment we open the doors and, and they would be open next week if it wasn't for lockdown. Sorry, this week it wasn't for lockdown, um, but we're not going to be opening it uh, until, until it's safe to do so. Um, but what people can be absolutely sure about is that all of the energy will be net zero and it'll be net zero from 2020 onwards. Um, and there's really a bit more to it than that. You know, the solar farms as well, um, you know, we, we don't just kind of take a, a passive view. We're also working on turning these solar farms into nature sanctuaries to protect species as well. You know, and so really it's very important that all of our activities that we're doing and, and, and everybody who, you know, participates in some way recognizes that, you know, really we are doing everything we can and we need, you know, help collectively to, um, uh, to, to do as much good as we can in the time frames that we have. Can I just go on to the next slide? Brilliant. Todd, uh, I'm just going to uh, give you uh, a... Uh, last, last slide from me. Um, yeah. uh, just, just, you know, to, to leave it a benefit, and this is something that you, um, you know, particular benefit for people of, of, uh, in, in the Great Notley area, something we haven't really announced yet is the final, final piece of the jigsaw. It's something called Sun to Wheel, and we're about to be launching um, in the next couple of weeks when we open it, a whole range of electric vehicles that combine the energy from solar that combine the uh, electric forecourt. Uh, and the overall objective is that these vehicles, which will be you know, combined with leasing packages, will cost less than petrol or diesel cars um, every month from the day that the site opens. So it's net zero, it's less expensive than petrol and diesel, uh, it's net zero and it's available from now. Anyway, that's what we're doing. And uh, we, we, you know, for this to be successful, we really need the support of everybody in the area. Uh, and if there's likewise anything we can do to support people in the area, we'd also love to know that. That's me. Great, thanks very much. Toddington, it's great to hear about the site. Um, so moving on, I'm gonna pass you over to Esme Dongi, who um, has been supporting this project, and you may well have heard of her um, if you're joining us today. Um, Esme is one of the um, project managers at Community Energy South, and she also runs her own community energy company in Forest Row, um, down in Sussex, which she started in, what, in 2013, um, and is going to strength strength. So I'll pass you on to Dongi, to Esme. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ollie. Thank you. So um, I'm aware that we're going a little bit over on the presentation, yeah. so I'll keep this um, as short as sweet as possible. So what I wanted to let you know a bit about is a little bit about Community Energy South, how we link into this project, and then most importantly, what we can do at Community Energy South to support you in the local community to go forward with more community energy projects. So Community Energy South was set up in 2013 and we're an umbrella group that supports community energy groups throughout the South East. And we've also teamed up with Essex County Council to support communities throughout Essex with delivering community energy projects. And Essex County Council really wants to see this, uh, the Braintree Electric Forecourt to become a springboard for more community energy projects. So it's our mission to encourage all things uh, to community energy. Uh, and what is community energy all about? People ask that question, you know, what does it actually mean? And essentially it's about local community driving all sorts of sustainable energy, low carbon pro energy projects. So that could be a renewable energy project, like a solar farm, like a renewable heat project, 
a sustainable transport project, like the one we've just heard, energy efficiency projects. Also, fuel poverty do a lot to help people save money on their energy bills. Um, generally, community energy pro um, uh, projects are not for profit, and companies look to go forward with either grant funded projects or renewable energy installations. So that's just a quick slide uh, looking at the vision in England. So it just gives you a bit of an overview about the sector. Community energy is all about empowering local communities to become more self-sufficient with their energy supply. It's about creating jobs, uh, of course, renewable energy, sustainable energy, and helping that transition on a local community level. And there's a whole wide range of different community energy projects out there. So here's just a snapshot of a few. So we've got solar schools up there, uh, lots of solar schools throughout the southeast. Uh, I put my one in from Forest Row Energy. So we're looking at how to help local communities transition from oil to renewable heat. There's a, a project there to put in place a wood heat biomass. And then a really exciting project called Riding Sunbeams. So we're working with a range of different community energy groups to help them to connect solar farm to, to the railways. And then just another quick one there about uh, fuel poverty from Vesco as well. So very quick snapshot. And I'm interested to ask you all a question. So I'm just gonna launch another poll. I'm interested to ask you what kind of community energy projects interest you the most. So you should be able to see that on your screen now. So time for you to just have a little vote. And it's a multiple choice. You can have as many as you, you like. As many as you like now. Great. Should we see minute. the results, Esme? Just a couple more still come in, still changing. Uh -huh. It's all happening at this end. Okay, I'm going to end that now. So it's good to see that there's a lot of interest amongst all different types of community energy projects, including renewable energy for community buildings, 62%. Nearly 50% are interested in energy efficiency. 62%, of course, great, interested in low carbon transport projects, a um, big reason why we're here, EV charging. Uh, big interest also, well, the most popular is to help people save money on their energy bills and also to reduce energy, it's important for all of us, and also to raise awareness as well. So, let me just show you. Great. Okay. So what can we do to support you in the local community? So uh, we're working with Essex County Council on what's known as our Pathways Project. And that is looking to take uh, local groups through the whole process of becoming a community energy group and starting your first project. So first of all, I have a guide I'm going to send around to everyone um, after this event. And it gives an overview of how to go about starting a community energy group, which I hope you'll find of interest. Once you have had a read of that, so that's the first thing we've, we've, we're doing is to give you this guide. There's a Community Energy Masterclass that's coming up on the 3rd of December, and that takes you through the whole process of starting a community energy group, where do you start, identifying new projects, um, technical aspects, finding funding, and you will all receive an invite to that. And then what we're offering to people in Great Notley and surrounding areas is a whole range of uh, business development support to start up community energy groups and projects. So that's in two stages. So first step support, uh, we're working with 10 different groups and we're going to look at where people are, where they want to go and just providing them with some initial support. And then we'll go on to more in-depth support with five groups throughout Essex and that will help them to put together a business plan put together your first funding bid, so start your first pro projects, and also become incorporated. So that's gonna be really launching five community energy groups throughout Essex. 
So as I mentioned, come along to the Community Energy Masterclass on the 3rd of December. That's an all day event. And one thing also encouraging um, you to do in Great Notley and surrounding areas, there's a survey to answer online if you haven't done that already. This really helps us to see what your views and ideas are and opinions and to shop, shape local support. So if you haven't completed that, I'll send a link around and please also, please also send that on to people in your local community as well. So I've raced through that because I wanted to leave time for a discussion. So I'm going to hand you back over to Ollie. Thanks very much, Esme. Um, so we've got a wealth of, of um, expertise here. And um, so and about just over 20 minutes for questions. Um, so what do you think about community energy? And in the original questionnaire, um, um, there's a lot of interest in it and what it means for Great Notley in the local area. Um, and have you got ideas for sustainable transport, renewable energy, energy efficiency, fuel poverty projects um, in Great Notley in the surrounding areas? And, um, you know, we do a lot of work with community interest groups around fuel poverty and energy bill advice. And it's, it's really something that gives a lot of value locally where you can start with. And, and how would you like to be involved and would you like to be involved? So um, what I'll do is uh, you can actually put your hand up. So if you want to ask a question um, in, in the um, raise a hand, so if you press on the participants or if not, you can show yourselves, put yourself on video and put your hand up. I see Suzanne has got her hand up so we can Start with the question I'm with you, stop, I'm just going to stop the screen share now so that everyone can yeah, see everyone's I can faces. See everybody. So I've got Suzanne and then Mark um, Hager, you put your hand up. Suzanne, are you from Great Notley? Uh, yeah, I'm actually the clerk for Great Notley Parish Council. Oh, um, I've actually been talking to our local community centre. They're actually run by an independent charity. Uh, they're very interested in what grant funding may be available for them to put solar panels on the roof of their building. Uh, it seems to be quite a complicated task to form yourself into an energy group, but presumably they have to be engaged in that in order to get any grant funding, am I correct? Uh, so did you say they're a registered charity? Yeah, they're a registered charity. Okay, so uh, in would that they case... Be able to apply direct for grants or would they have to become part of this local community energy group that you're talking about? Not necessarily. So it's a start. I mean, to begin with, um, if they contacted Esme or I, and we'll post our, our email address at the bottom, um, we can have a look at it. And it's a start for, for being involved in a community energy. You need to have um, a catalyst project, you know, and well, the grids have project is one, but having solar locally, and one way of raising money for, for solar on a building like that could be for the community to part own it, to have shares in it. And that's historically how community energy projects um, are put together. But also, um, where, you know, if the, if, the, if the building and the, the charity want advice, then we can help steer them in the right direction. Okay, and my other point was relating really to Essex County Council and to Tom. Uh, I think there's a good opportunity here from what you're saying about climate change issues and what Essex County Council are doing to make sure you communicate with us down here at parish level because obviously we're the sort of closest layer of local government so to speak to our residents and we're keen to be putting those messages out so I would encourage you to communicate with us as best you can. Yeah, just Suzanne I couldn't agree with that more um, I think um, I'll take that back to my colleagues in comms but I know with their comms strategy um, that they're very keen to engage with the parish councils. I totally agree with your comment. Thank you. Thanks, Suzanne. Um, and we'll definitely know what your comments are. So, uh, Mark, Mark Hager, are you from Great Notley? I am. I'm also from the parish council, one of the councillors. So, there's, uh, there's two of us here tonight, and we're very keen to see what's going on, particularly with our new neighbours at GridServe. So, welcome, Tod Toddington, and to the team. I did meet, I think, 
you or one or two others at Fully Charged Live last year. So it's been quite interesting to see from just a couple of drawings on a screen to well, what we see every, every day as we go past. Um, so first question is for Toddington, uh, some practical things. When are you opening? Um, I know it's a difficult time at the moment. Are you, are you opening the whole thing for charging? And, and also, um, if you do want to charge a car, how are you doing it? Are you, are you one of these providers that you have to download an app first or is it just uh, touch with a debit card or what have you? Because I know that's uh, something that uh, every EV driver wants to know. So I'll start. So that's a question for you first and then I'll, I've got some questions for Tom and Esme afterwards. Awesome. So uh, yeah, great to see you again. So fully charged, by the way, um, they've come and done a whole program on us uh, last week. Mm the site so it's going probably going to go out on the third of yeah. December so we you know it's obviously just the difficult time that we're in at the moment we you know we we'd, we kind of said that we were going to be open on 24th you've seen the pictures um, apart from filling up the shelves it, it's basically done um, so we are planning on being open as quickly as as early as we possibly can but what we don't want to do is be a reason for people to come out of lockdown we just think that would be the wrong thing to do and uh, if we turn around and say, look, it's open, we think that yeah. people possibly you know, they can have a look because no one's really seen anything quite like it. Okay. So um, uh, as early as it's safe to do so it is the plan. Um, and in terms of how uh, you know, how people charge, um, you know, we have got going to have quite a few levels to it. The simplest one is, is a payment system. I've tried to change my profile, this guy here. Gareth, can you go on mute, please? <laughs> Great. The simplest one is a contactless payment system. So, well done, Mark. Somebody, anybody turns up, they, you know, touch a card and it'll, and it'll start charging. Um, the um, we're we're bringing in um, a number of other things as well in the future. Um, we've got something called plug and charge coming, which is that if you want to get an app at some point, you can, and then the, and by that the car can remember you. So next, the, uh, plug it in. Just profile. Um, so uh, we've got that too, um, and actually the vehicle deals that we that we talked about all include charging as well, and that's why we say it's going to be cheaper than petrol or diesel because it's in a certain amount of money a month. It also includes charging, and those cars will come um, with plug and charge and contactless payments. You literally turn up, plug them in, and walk away, and it will all just work itself. So we're I, I've been driving an electric car now for, for seven years. It's been um, it's been a lot of fun, but quite painful. Um, and uh, all of the pain I'm trying to remove uh, in, in, in making it incredibly easy. So <laughs> we, we, if we can make it better, let us know. We, we, I'm sure, won't have got it right from day one, but we'll do our very best to, to get Thanks. it right. Okay, great. Thanks, Toddington. And, and Mark, you had some, yeah. another question? Yeah, so, so, so Tom, um, good to see that you're getting um, a, a lot of um, initiatives underway with uh, with Essex County Council. I guess one of my frustrations, just that every time I, I drive past literally any new housing development, is that there is no difference to any other housing development I've been driving past for the last 30 years. And if I go past Beauty Park, for example, the, there's no solar roofs, nothing. And I, and I look at um, I think uh, that the, there's a show they did on, on the Cerro home development at Cardiff where the whole development is net zero. They've got boreholes with ground source heat pumps and all that sort of stuff. And I just kind of thought, why are we still installing gas? Why, why, why haven't the, the, the design standards for properties, why are they not changing? So it seems to me maybe there's more need to be done at a top of county level just to, to, to encourage the developers that in exchange for planning permission actually they need to adopt a, 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 a greener approach to building homes because that's where you know transport's a big area but even bigger is is the energy we use to heat our homes yeah my god i couldn't agree more um i think it's criminal that we're building houses now that we're then going to have to retrofit in five ten fifteen years time it's absolutely crazy um and we could be going out back and ripping out gas boilers in, in relatively new build homes so um, I can't speak for my planning colleagues, but I, I know they are working very hard on it. I think, as you know, the planning decisions sit with the districts, but we're, we're working increasingly closely with planning and with colleagues in districts to say, look, we need to change this. We need to change it quickly. 
Um, it's certainly been a real point of focus for the Essex Climate Action Commission as well. So I know that they're going to be putting some very ambitious recommendations um, to Essex County Council members you know, that we need to take action on this really quickly. Um, not because Essex has got a huge house building programme. So, you know, we're one part of the country where actually um, we've got a very significant amount of our housing stock that's going to exist in 2050 still to be built. So there's a huge opportunity there. And I think people are really waking up to that because there's jobs that comes with it and, um, you know, great opportunities to have new businesses located in Essex that can build the type of homes that we need to have built. So I totally agree with you. I think, um, you know, I'm, I certainly am banging the drum around it as well. And my planning colleagues are, are right behind that. I think there's a, there's, a, there's a mature conversation we need to have with um, the districts, so, but really with the planners as well. And the other thing I'll say is um, our in-house development team, Essex Housing, uh, which builds and develops um, houses for private sale um, and for supported accommodation, is looking to do just that. So to build some exemplar net zero developments to show that it can be done. Um, so yes, I agree with your comments, but I, I also acknowledge there's a lot more need to be done still. Indeed, yeah. Um, Excellent. Finally, Thanks very much, Tom. And I, I was just going to say from, uh, um, if you don't mind, sorry, Mark, sure. the, um, you know, we've got examples of community energy groups around the country now um, who are getting involved with local housing developments and actually, you know, being involved with, with putting in an, a community owned energy supply service. So what that looks like maybe um, with the central energy system the, um, that supplies all the houses. And um, I wouldn't be surprised now with the onset of net zero if those types of projects aren't encouraged more and more across the country to how local communities can get involved with that. So, um, but I've certainly seen it in other places in Bristol, in Manchester, and, and now down in the Southeast as well. Here's my final question um, to, to you, Esme. In terms of, um, you know, a lot of people might be interested in, in having um, so, you know, solar PV or the solar thermal installed on, on, on their houses, don't necessarily know how to go about it or what uh, grants and what have you might be available to them. Um, yeah, if, if there's any um, information in an easily digestible form, um, that you might have that Susan and I can can then publish to to residents of Great Notley. Um, I'm sure that'd be greatly appreciated by everybody. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, one thing to really promote at the moment is the Green Homes Grant. So um, I can direct you towards that. So that's currently the 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 main grant that's available to homeowners for its renewable heat and energy efficiency. So I can certainly send you a link on that. And just to say our parish magazine is coming out very shortly so uh, if you are able to get something to me within the next week or so uh, it could go into the next issue as uh, some interesting information for residents sure thanks. that's fantastic yeah great thanks suzanne uh, suzanne you asked that this session will be um, um recorded so i'll make sure you get a link at the end as well um so has anybody else got any more questions Oh. Sorry if I missed somebody. John oh, Taylor's got his hand up. Oh, John Taylor. John, would you like to put your video on or, or come? Oh, there you are, John. Yep, there we go. <laughs> Hi there, everybody. Um, yeah, I'm just slightly north of you. I live in Ipswich at the moment, but in freer times, I was commuting down to Chelmsford in my electric car. So, um, I, yeah, I really look forward to yeah, dropping by the um, not the charging station when it's available. Um, my question is probably for Toddington. Is uh, you mentioned your solar farm is 44 miles away? Um, if there was an opportunity to build something closer, is there a possible? Is it? Is there a possibility to link like a closer solar farm and su sell you power directly? Yeah. So the uh, ideal solution. Um, is is to have solar farms that are, are connected in fact just before we started we were saying to esme and ollie that we've actually got a planning application in for a site in uckfield where 
we're building a solar farm and an electric forecourt at the same time, or we're at least planning on doing so. Um, but for this particular site, we, we didn't have the space to be able to do that. Um, but if you've got, you know, a potential solar farm in the vicinity, that, uh, which we could connect, I'd love to do it. It's much better because when you can provide energy directly from solar, that's zero carbon, which is clearly even better than net zero, which, um, which is when you have to kind of net one off against another. So yeah, I mean, absolutely love to have that conversation and, uh, really love to see you at the electric forecourt. So brilliant. Delighted, uh, your fellow electric vehicle driver. And yeah, please follow up. Um, my email is I'm quite easy to get hold of, tullington.harper at gridserve.com. There is a solar farm about 200 yards from your forecourt. Yeah, it's not our solar farm. It's, um, it's not yours, but it, it, it's there. It's not ours. It, yeah, it's, it's, it's on my... I, I, I would like to do that. There's some complexities, because when people build solar farms, they, they tend to... Um, pre to, to get them financed you basically pre-sell your energy for many years oh, okay. so even though there's one there it's not as straightforward but I'm a very persistent chat I, I will keep <laughs> <up trying. laughs> Holly you're on mute at the moment sorry that old trick Andrew Hensman your hand was up and I believe Peter O'Donnell as well. Um, so should we go Andrew and then Peter? Um, and then we'll see if the panel can answer the questions. Thank you. Andrew. Well, no question per se. It's more just to say hello. I'm also just up the road, but a lot closer in Central Braintree. And as you can see, it's not about um, talking the talk, it's walking the walk. And um, Tom Day and um, Simon Walsh came to see us and gave us some ideas and we've got a lot of excess energy, hence we are actually carbon negative and have been for many years. So Toddington, if you want to um, hook up and if um, Great Notley's um, community centre wants to know how to do it, we've done it. So we've got the solar panels, we've got the batteries, we've got the space, we've even got space for more um, electric vehicle charging points, Toddington, if you want to put any in the centre of the town. Just to give people a little boost to get them down to uh, your forecourt where they can then take it back. To your that would be fab. And so we've also got, I should probably say we've got Amanda, who's our community engagement manager as well. Amanda, maybe as well you could also, you know, connect, connect with Andrew. Yeah. Um, yeah. One, one ambition I've got for a um, community project is I've actually tried to start up Essex Energy, um, but didn't get very far. So I'm hoping perhaps the 3rd of December will help me to do that. Um, and also because again we've got the um the catalyst project that we've actually built and it's community homes um but it's also about teaching and i've got a lot of um, teaching aids and showing people how it actually works on the ground so they come and visit us you know where, where before they could and i can do it virtually but it's whether um toddington you'd be interested in some sort of experience not necessarily on this site because i've got other ideas that may may interest you and it may also be a uh, more local um, um, en energy supply that you can add to the grid that um, can go on to the experience as well so expand your horizons if you know what I mean. It, it sounds good so we're up for trying all sorts of things you know the, the the most important thing from our perspective is that we all just just get on with stuff and we, we make this happen while we've got a window to do so so I'd love to do that um, and uh, Maybe, man, if you pick up and we can arrange a time to meet on, on the next round, it'd be super awesome. Right, so um, Andrew, that's brilliant that we've heard from you. And um, I take it you'll be in touch with Esme as well, or our speaker. Yeah, with um, and Tom as well, because I've already got the contact with Tom. Um, and brilliant. Just okay, that's good I'm, if we can. I'm actually, I'm actually going through district council, so um, at least we are showing an interest. Good, fantastic. Look forward to connecting to with you, Andrew. So I've got, um, I've, I've had a question in the background, which I'm going to let Amanda think about before I ask Peter O'Connell, O'Donnell, to ask your question. Peter, you had your hand up. You still have a question, yeah? So just in the background, we've got Natalia, who's on the move at the moment. She's travelling, hopefully in an electric car. And... Um, she said, um, she has a question, how do we connect with younger generation 
on the importance of community engagement such as this? What's your presence on social media platforms or areas where younger po population are to engage with them? Um, and thank you, she said, for the event. So, um, Amanda, I'll let you answer that in a second. And Peter, would you like to ask you your question? Uh, thank you, Ollie. Uh, a question to Toddington. Um, are you able to tell us of your plans for the future as to where else you're, you're looking at putting um, the electric forecourts? You've mentioned Uck, uh, Uckfield, I think you said. Um, where, where else in the country uh, are you planning on putting them? So our, our plan is to, is to deliver a UK-wide network within the next five years. So we're targeting to, to, to build over 100 sites um, mm. in that time frame. Um, we've also recognized we can't build electric forecourts everywhere as much as we love them. They're just, you know, they're not the right place. They're not the right shape for every location. But we've also got some different formats, some smaller ones. We've got another one, slightly smaller format in Norwich, which we just got planning permission for recently. Um, we, um, we have a much smaller version, which is, uh, which we call an electric hub, which is groups of six or 12 charges in different locations. So the, the, the main objective is, you know, within a very, very short period of time, to enable anybody to traverse the country without any anxiety at all. And, uh, and as I said before, to try and do it in a way that it's a better experience to petrol or diesel so that people will have the encouragement to just, you know, happily get into electric vehicles without some of the concerns that people rightfully have today. Okay, right. great, thanks. Thanks for your question, Peter. Um, Amanda, I put you on the spot there to answer Natalia's um, question. Um, is there a chance that the local school or the young people can visit the site or? Um, yeah. yeah, sure. Um, I started GridServe um, as a community engagement manager and I've been looking at several ways of um, engaging with the local community, whether it's businesses and schools is massive. Um, where there are 559 schools in Essex, um, I haven't reached out for every single one, but the local schools, we really want to connect with sixth forms colleges. Um, we have spoken to them, many secondary schools, primary schools, where we will, in the very near future, facilitate school trips over to site. We have an amazing, which Todd didn't cover up, I don't think, a real amazing kids interactive area. Um, where children can come, school trip children, um, they can use the machines, touch screens, um, they can learn about electric vehicles at a very, very, very early age. Um, and we really welcome the school trips as and when we can bring them over to the forecourt. So we're really looking forward to that. We also have reached out to schools with regards to providing some artwork, whether it be electric vehicles, um, pollution because we'd love to have some wall art from the local community local children um, at the forecourt um, so, so a lot of engagement on that side um, with social media platforms we have Instagram now we have Twitter we have the Facebook groups um, we're engaging very slowly but surely what why we don't have so much manpower on social platforms we are um, going to be having that at the forefront of um, our engagement very soon. Great. Well, it's the thing is, is it, thank you very much, Amanda. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, okay, so our time is, is we've got to 7.30, to 8.30, sorry. Um, I've been watching the time. Thank you very much for all the speakers. Um, I, we will be sending around um, a thank you and also a link to the questionnaire. It's really helpful to, to hear your views and um, feedback from you about this event. And also if you want to get involved and move forward on community energy. Esme, we've got an event at the beginning of December, a masterclass for community energy, which will invite you to come along. We've got some speakers and events. Esme, do you just want to? Yeah, so, so 3rd of December is our Community Energy Masterclass and uh, we'll be getting in touch with everybody and letting you know the registration details for that if you don't already have them. And also this will be, this recording will be put on our website um, within the next week or so. 
Brilliant. And you can find out more information on the Community Energy South website. We'll, we'll make sure we come back to Suzanne um, about um, a, something in the parish news and a link to that. So, and, and I'm sure there'll be information if you all visit the GridServe site and, um, and go and have a, a, go and visit it and have a coffee, find out all about it. That'd be great. Good. Um, Aaron's just posted sorry. the link in the chat. Aaron's just posted the link to the Community Energy Masterclass in the chat box. So I'll leave that up for a little while. And um, I don't think there are any further questions that I see. If I've missed anybody, I apologize. Um, do be in touch and keep the conversation going. And um, for now, thank you very much. And thank you for all the speakers. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thank you very much, Thanks, Amanda. Thank you, Toddington. Thanks, yeah. Tom. Be in touch soon. Look forward to it. Thanks, Andrew. I like your backdrop, by the way, Andrew. That's our EPC. Good to see your EPC in the background. <laughs> I, th I thought I would come prepared. So uh, well, you got you got an A plus going on there. That's what I'm saying. We've had it. We've had it for years. It's we'll very rare. It. Yeah, we were the first building in Essex to get it. Guess how many there are. Case study. Can we get a case study on that to share in Grey Notley? Yeah, of course you can. You must it's have not, a case study already. Guess how many A stars in the whole of we whole of Wildon, There's only um, two. No, in Wildon District, there's two. Mm -hmm. Have you yeah, got, have you got a case study, um, Andrew? Yeah, yeah. Because um, like 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 I was saying before, I wanted to um, expand this in um, this, I've I've got a um, 11 kV substation at the back of me, and the DNO were very good to us. So yeah. um, because they act, we own the land that the substation's on. Yeah. So of course I got a three phase, um, 100 amp phase um, link put in, and then I just covered our roof with um, solar panel basically. And then it was Tom that came to see us and said, go and look at batteries, see how they pan out. Not brilliant, but at least I could give him real figures as an independent without having it skewed by some consultant that comes in and says, because he wants to sell a product. But it was a case of now, because of how much we sell it back to the grid, because I actually went metered exports, and I had to go and get a meter myself from the meter suppliers, because the meter fitters, Larry Beck, didn't know how to do it. Wow. So um, because we're, we've exported 132 megawatts so far, um, I wanted paying for them, so we got an extra 10,000 pounds out of that. And it's just after things like that and changing your uh, supplier because some will be deemed export, some will be metered, some want half hourly, and then who, you get who are you with at the moment? SSE. All right, okay, good. Um, because they allowed me to break the 30 um, kilowatt barrier without going half hourly metered because it would be right. cost prohibitive because you have to get the mod in the uh, there's three things you need for half hourly and it costs you like 200 pounds a month for the contract to read your meter and it's cost prohibitive so I went I'm not doing it and SSE went we'll do it for you so it, it went the meter and we've we've done that ever since so it's a case of now it's wanting to expand it looking at um, geothermal and all sorts and I had um I had my eyes on the plot next door but unfortunately um, a certain housing provider got it and has nicked half the highway and the car park as well which they don't know, but of course, um, highway records are so bad that they've got away with it. And all the houses have got gas going in, and I'm thinking, why can't you do renewables? Why can't you team up with us? You know, I've got um, Essex Energy going, as I said. Uh, at the moment, I point that to the um, Essex County Council iChooser, but then found that iChooser was um, not um, non-technical people friendly. So I got um, a lot of people to sign up to it, but they don't have a computer. So I thought, well, what I want to do is um, I've got an idea, and I'm not going to say it on here because someone will pinch it, but 
from my workings with um, exporting energy, there's an alternative model which Toddington did allude to. And if that was brought down to the community, you will get a lot more take up guarantees because it's done in another country. And again, I'll not tell you where it is because that will tell you how to do it. <laughs> but it's a case of partnering, getting it in there. And I, I think we can do a better job than I do. <laughs> well, that's great. Now, listen, I just want to tell you one thing, but one of the principles of community energy is that we're all stronger together. And we yeah, yeah, all absolutely. and share our business models so that it can go to scale. So when you're ready, let us know about that. Oh, I'm ready. Um, I've got it all written up. So um, I was great. going to send it to Would Tom. Would you share it with us? It. And um, we're happy to support Essex um, Community Energy. That's great. Yeah, because because like um, I noticed there was a niche, there's a hole there, and I think if you guys have got the grants and so on, and if we can get to the um, the, the, the OLEB and there's um, money there and I've been talking to the oil giants to say would they come to this at BP Shell and so on but if Grid Serve will come instead and do something you know it, it, it's a it's a real boost because obviously the the Grid Serve experience is designed for a couple of hours but for people that can park up and wander into town type thing we, we've got the space great so it's it's trying to get you know, we've got the land, we've got some funding, it's tying it up and trying to get someone who's got the vision and has done it in between us, join, you know, dot the I's, cross the T's, you know, and then dot the, I, dot the T's and cross the I's. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, thanks, Andrew, very much. It's been fascinating no meeting everybody locally and hearing about GridServe and, and about, you yeah, know, your work. Brilliant. That's great. Listen, um, I better close the meeting. Yeah. Otherwise... Let's be, you, um, Let's be in touch. Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. Thanks Brilliant. very much, Esme. All the best, everyone. I'm going to close the meeting now. Right. Have, Have a good, a good evening. evening. Bye.